In this video, we're going to talk about exception handling in Java. Now, I will tell you right away, this is very similar to the type of error handling that you would do in C Sharp, because both languages use what is called the try catch. Now, we'll talk about the try catch in a few minutes, but first, I'm just going to talk briefly about why we use exception handling. And the reason is very simple. You may have a very large program, and certain blocks of code within that program are risky. That is, you're not sure if it may cause a bug, but it possibly could. Perhaps you have multiple Java processes going, or there could be a bug with a particular OS, and you're not sure this code will work. And so that's where the try-catch comes into play. But before we get to the try-catch, we're actually going to create an error with this code I've set up right here. Now you can see I've set up a very simple array. And here we declare it, and here we're allocating three elements. And here are the three elements, and then we're just doing a system.out.print. And we're just going to print out the second element. So let's go ahead and do that and just make sure that part works. And it did. It printed out the integer 3, which is what we wanted. Now, the error that we're going to simulate, and this is a very common error in programming, we're going to simulate an out-of-bounds error. So we're going to go ahead and try to print out an element that is not in here. Remember, we set the size here to 3, so let's go ahead and specify a really large number like 99. Obviously, we don't have that element in this array. So let's go ahead and rerun this. And now you can see an exception was created. Now this is a really nasty message. We want to actually create a more readable message for the user if an out of bounds exception occurs. And that's where the try catch comes into play. Now the try catch is basically referred to as blocks. So you'll have the try block and you'll have the catch block. That's what they call them. And basically all that means is that it's a block of code that does something. That's really it. And they go together hand in hand. So if you create a try block, you must have a catch block. And the other point is that the try block is where we try to execute some code. That's all it really is. It's basically the code that's at risk. So we insert all of that code within the try block. And if the code works, that's fine. Nothing will happen. The catch block will not get executed. But if an exception occurs, that's where the catch block comes into play. It will catch or trap the exception, and then it allows you to do whatever it is you want to do. So you can do many different things. You could print out a new message. That's what we're going to do in this video, print out a more readable message. Or you could actually create some logs, some system trace logs that would allow you to debug what happened in your try block. And we'll do that in a future lecture. But for now, we're going to go ahead and set up the try block. So basically, all of this code, we're going to go ahead and insert into our try block. So essentially, what we're doing is we're wrapping all of this code within a try block. So, not surprisingly, we use the try keyword. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we need a squiggly bracket. Now, not surprisingly, we need to close this out. So we'll close it out down here. And there we've got our try. Now you're gonna see some IntelliSense here and that's where it says, hey, I need a catch. And that's what I was telling you earlier. If you have a try, you need a catch. And optionally, you can use the final block and we'll talk about that in a future lecture. But for now, we're just gonna do the try catch. So right after, this closing squiggly bracket, we want to go ahead and put in our catch. So let's go ahead and do that. So we just use the catch keyword. And this actually takes two arguments. And we'll talk about these in a moment. Now, of course, we need our squiggly brackets again. And then we need to go ahead and put in the block of code that we want to be executed if we catch our exception. And in this case, we're just going to create a more readable message. So let's just go ahead and actually copy and paste this line. And we'll go ahead and throw that in here. And whoops, I created too many of these uh, closing squiggly lines. Let's get rid of that. Okay, now we're all set. And what we're going to do is go ahead and just put in some text here. And we'll say an out of bounds exception occurred. So we're rather specific in the message. And this is much more readable than that nasty stuff we had before. So let's go ahead and run this now and see if we trap the out of bounds exception. So we're gonna run exactly the same code we had before, except now we've got the risky code wrapped within this nice little try block. And we've got the code that we want to be executed in our nice little catch block. So let's go ahead and run this. And there you can see it worked. We got our message and of course this is much more readable. 
Now, the way the arguments work within the catch, it takes two arguments. This first one is a class, and this is actually something that Java provides for us. And there are all types of exceptions. There are I.O. exceptions. You could put that in here. There are math exceptions. And Java has been nice enough, again, to create these classes that we can just specify in our argument for the particular type of exception that we want to catch. And in this case, we wanted to catch an out-of-bounds exception, so we use this index out-of-bounds exception class that Java provided for us. And it worked. It actually caught it. And this is actually an object or variable of this class. And we could reuse this down in this catch block if we wanted to. Now we're not gonna do that in this video, we'll do that in a later video. And that's why it's actually telling us that we're not using this. But we do wanna actually put it in here as a placeholder in case we wanna use it later on. Now you can actually specify multiple catch blocks and that's what we'll cover in the next video.